My brothers and sisters in Christ, the greatest threat to us as human beings is not death, but it's sin. Now, this may sound like a, a very preachy thing for a priest to say, and yet today's readings help to point out this reality. We spend much of our life obsessed with death, that which is knowably before us, and if we paid even a drop of as much attention to our, our moral, our spiritual health as we to our, do to our bodily health, we'd be much better off. In the gospel, we see that Jesus' heart is moved with pity for the crowd, and he longs to give them good things to meet their needs. This is a passage that remind us, reminds us of the tenderness of God and his generosity. And so we need to keep this in light as we work backwards to the first reading from Genesis, where we hear the, the unpacking of original sin, as now the dialogue begins between, G, uh, between God, between Adam and Eve, and the serpent. And so first of all, we heard yesterday the account, the rationalization, the pride that goes into the committing of the first sin. But then they hide themselves, and so God comes looking, finds them hidden. This illustrates that already there's been a rupture in relationship and what is supposed to be. God had walked freely with them in the garden. Now they realize that they are naked, they are vulnerable, they are afraid. There is a division, a fracturing of communion. So, where there was oneness of persons before, now there is division. So God calls them out of their hiding. Adam admits he's afraid. God says, ah, you've eaten of the fruit. And we see almost laughably in childlike form, and yet we are childish in our sinfulness. If we don't realize that, we are. And so immediately we see like how the story of every blame game has unfolded ever since. God says, Adam, so you did wrong, huh? And Adam says, well, she made me do it. So he casts the blame, passes the buck to Eve. And God asks Eve, why did you do this? And she says, well, the serpent made me do it. The first time in human history that someone answers with, the devil made me do it. It didn't work the first time. It doesn't work today. And so the blame game is on. And you'll notice God does not excuse the serpent. He knows what the serpent has done here as the tempter, and yet the sin is Adam and Eve's. Through their own agency, they did it. They're not absolved of blame here. And so the rest of the account in today's first reading seems like a line of punishments, uh, of judgments rendered. Except they're not necessarily punishments, even though they appear that way. And one of those that we have to acknowledge is this is where death enters the picture. How? God, seeing their state, realizes they must be kept from the tree of life or else they would have immortality. And so, robbed of immortality, mortality enters the picture. Death enters the scene for man. Is this a punishment? Or is there something else at work here? In fact, Death and these consequences that God spells out are not punitive. They're, re they're remedies. Even though, like so many things in life, we don't see God's discipline of us as a remedy. We just see it as punitive, as cruel. But instead, God realizes that if human beings in this sorry state of sin, of fear, of ruptured relationship, if mankind were to live like that eternally, that would be hell. And so death is a mercy. The fact that we are transient and passing actually opens the door for salvation, for the work of God to come about and bring healing. Without it, there would be no healing. We would be like the angels, the fallen demons, just locked into an eternity of remorse and angst. But instead, God's salvation is already at work from the moment of this first sin, leading to the cross of Jesus. And so, death is not the thing we have to fear the most. In fact, even the picture or the, the entering of death into our story, and it's temporary. As we're told, in the plan of salvation, the last thing to be destroyed will be death itself. And so, death has entered the scene and one day will be gone again, because it's been put there ultimately for our good, not for our loss. 
Indeed, God holds all things in the palm of his hand, and he never ceases to be moved with pity for us and to give us every good gift so that we might be healed. May God bless you all.